Ladies and gentlemen, the sublimely elegant here as always, and welcome to Doom Builder 2 Tutorials. Um, I've been working on this for a little while, and it's gonna be a bumpy ride, so please do bear with me as we go through this. This is the E2M7 map from Doom 1, and there's a specific reason that I'm playing this map as opposed to one that I have said, um, personally created or even, um, go through an actual other little tutorial. And the reason for that being is level design, and it's probably one of the bigger things to have to cover uh, when it comes to creating a good Doom level, and this is a very difficult thing to actually talk about, as it's something that I'm not particularly good at myself. But regardless, the information does need to be out there, so I'm going to be trying my best uh, while I play through this to give you guys a bit of information on level design. The specific reason that I chose E2M7 is because it probably has some of the best level design that I've seen in a Doom map um, in my entire life, maybe. The only bad thing about this map seems to be its aesthetic. And other than that, though, all of the little trickeries that they have and the format of it is quite nice. Uh, the game is going to be moving over to a smaller part of the screen now for some additional information. So... I'm playing this and looking at just like a bunch of fucking thumbnails of my pictures to try to do this the best I can. Um, first I'll pull up the 100%. So that is a line that I actually traced of myself playing through this level um, to 100% the level. And it shows you just how much there is to really go out and get in places to find, uh, which is quite nice. There's also this little line I've created, which is the fastest path taken to be able to complete the level. Just literally, if you need to go this through this entire level as humanly, as fast as humanly possible, that is the uh, path that you would take, the most efficient path in order to complete the level. And you can tell that it's vastly different in both complexity and time uh, as opposed to 100%ing the level, uh, which is a very good thing to utilize in any of your map creations. Um, it, the, the huge difference between those showcases the fact that the game's level design is extremely non-linear. It, it enables the player the chance to take his time, his or her time, to either find secrets, uh, additional ammo, or even just take it at their own pace, assuming that they are having difficulty with the level itself. Uh, so that is that non-linear gameplay that you are actually seeing between the vast differences between the two run-throughs of the map. Another thing to obviously consider is the monster placement per difficulty as well as item placement for weapons, health, ammo, such as that, uh, as well as the key cards. That is also a very important part because the key cards, if you use them, is literally the one way you are controlling the progression of the level and you can use this knowledge to your advantage by uh, just the fact that you know that a player can't reach this part of the level before they've gone and gotten something else, you can adjust the difficulty accordingly. Because by the time you say get the yellow key, the player should have a chainsaw and a rocket launcher and a double barrel shotgun. Based off that information, you can make the second uh, segment, if you will, of the level much more difficult because you're aware that the player has these things. As, as opposed to when they're starting out, you need to assume they have pistol start because if you do die and you do have to pistol start the level, if it's unbeatable in that, in that way, no one will ever play because it's just too fucking difficult. And, he, and this one honestly maybe even has a little bit of a lackluster amount of ammunition but I feel it was kind of uh, on purpose as well. So taking into account all of that information is quite important. And here's a little diagram of the level itself actually segregated by the areas visible based on what key you have. The areas that aren't colored is everywhere you can travel from the get-go of the game. The second you are in the level, that is where you have to go. Um, all the places that you are allowed to go. Once you've attained some of the keys, then you can start using some of those newer areas, and you'll notice that um, each keyed area actually gets smaller in the amount of sectors, or l the size of the rooms, more uh, over the uh, more keys in you go, and the red key is 
purely and only for the exit room, which if we actually pull up the key uh, segregation of my personal map, the first one that I showed in the series, you will see that I've also done kind of the same thing. It gets smaller as you go down until the point where the last key is purely just so you can leave the level. Um, now, it's not always... Thank you. Jesus, that guy has been a bitch. <laughs> uh, you, you don't have to necessarily follow that type of ordering. Um, in fact, it's completely flexible in that regard. That's the beauty of making your own maps. Um, but it is a good one uh, and a format that could possibly be used to better the map designs that you have. Uh, working in these secrets is also a good pl good way to do it. The secrets should always have some sort of trade-off. In return, in return for getting the uh, chainsaw, you know, you have to sacrifice a bit of health if you're not careful to deal with the monsters guarding that secret properly. Damn it! I didn't want to get that. Um, that was a mistake. I feel like I might have just cost myself the level there. So, these are all things that you need to take and consider, and I know I'm kind of uh, repeating information a little bit, and like I said, I this is a very important thing to cover, but it's something that I'm not entirely, you know, perfected on. It's not something that I can nail every time I make a map. I have my hits and misses. Um, I'd say that Death Carcass was probably one of the better maps that I've honestly made in my entire Doom-making community. Um... So do keep that in mind as I talk through all of this. Uh, the specific key locations I can show here. I might have already shown them considering we've kind of covered it a little bit. And I'm getting a wee bit off track. Uh, is also very important as to control uh, where the player is actually going in the level. And utilizing that information to make sure that the level spike is appropriate to what the player may or may not have. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. Okay. Oh, get... Oh my gosh. That didn't go well at all. <laughs> Fuck. Alright. I guess I have to deal with that. Um... God, I really wish I knew more information. Um, Nonlinearity is one of the larger things you want to cover, and of course, others, aside from the actual way that the level plays through, you want to ensure that um, it looks good as well. Like I said, the texturing choices for this map are questionable at best. Um, it's again a personal caveat that a, mo a map maker, map maker, has to face. Um, unless you're honestly making maps just to play by yourself, which I can understand. It's fun, even as just a personal hobby, but it is something you want to keep in mind and consider when you're making maps to make sure that the aesthetic and theme fit properly throughout the level and that it actually has something to go by. Um, variance in room size is also a big one to uh, further the effect that the world is more vast than it really is. Um, for example, again in the Depth Carcass, the initial area is very, very, very tight. It's something that makes the player feel very claustrophobic and puts them on edge to not know what is to be expected in the coming events. Um, and then there's also, it has its Oh gosh. It has its open areas as well, which enable the player to get a little bit of breathing room and uh, actually utilize some of the larger weapons that they have. Uh, rocket launcher in close quarters, like they gave me, <laughs> like when I got the rocket launcher in this map, they gave it to me immediately the second I was about to be face to face with a demon, which means if I used it, I was going to die. It's a very good way for keeping the player on their uh, on their toes, and if you do happen to die at that part, you can be damn well sure you're not going to make the same mistake again. So it's stuff like that that is very nice to keep in mind as well. Now, I have cleared out this level, it appears. I think I should be able to go to the red door and leave, assuming I know where to find it. Which I have no idea where the fuck it is. Ah, here it is. Now, the reason for that second switch is actually, um, 
one raises this so that you may leave, which is, of course, you know, expected. But there's actually also a secret uh, at the very end, and this is another good technique that I personally haven't used really uh, in many of my designs. But if you manage to find your way, I say manage. Uh, there we go. To find your way all the way to the back. Oh, I appear to have done it wrong. Okay, there's a set of things you need to do. Uh, as you can see, the red key in the very top corner of this current image here. There's a door that rises right here with a little bit of a secret in there. And the reason the red key is highlighted on that part of the map is because you require the red key uh, to do the thing to get that open. Uh, and it's not as simple as just having the red key. It's not a red key door, but it's in the in a sense, basically, without being able to get to the places the red key allows you to go, you can't open that secret, is why that's red. That made no fucking sense at all. Now I'm trying to remember how it exactly that is done. And it might be a tripwire by walking in there. So now let's go back and see if that perhaps open the area. I'm so fucking lost right now. <laughs> uh, the maze aspect of a level is also a good thing to keep in mind when you're working on these things. But don't make it too ridiculously hard because this gets annoying. <laughs> Where the fuck am I going right now? Okay, I, I can't go that, that way. That's nothing, that's nothing go in here. Hold on. I think I actually need to look at one of these pictures to see where the fuck I am in the level. <laughs> okay, so this is where the yellow key is gotten. So, I'm gotta go... God, that would be the easiest way there, but I can't get up there. Okay, I think I need to go down and then curve back up. Like this, I think. Yep, okay. Is it open now? It's not. Okay. I have no recollection of how to reopen that secret. There is a secret there. And that's another thing to keep in mind when you're making your maps. Secrets. They really help the player. I'm pretty sure there's a soul sphere in that. And the fact that I can't get it really makes the next level suck for me. <laughs> so, yeah. You literally want to make these maps a living hell. I... I've been rambling a lot. I didn't give the most amount of information that could have possibly been useful. Uh, I'm completely aware of that. As I said before, this isn't something that I'm particularly good at. But hopefully, with the data that I've shown you, it gives you a bit of insight uh, that you can personally understand as to what makes a good level. Just by seeing the pictures alone on the side have hopefully been helpful to you. Thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry if this dragged on a little bit longer than I had hoped to. I really did try to cover as much as I can, and I think even then I possibly missed quite a bit of information. In fact, I most likely did. If you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see in the coming episodes for the Doom Builder tutorial slash level playthrough series, let me know. Drop a like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Have a nice day.